Hello to all my friends and family and welcome. Welcome to Jim's 5am club. I'm up here at Little Beach at uh, Nelson Bay, Port Stephens. And it's the week after the big rains and the, uh, the water is absolutely uh, brown, brown. So uh, we won't be swimming there. And I haven't seen anybody swimming over the past uh, couple of days. Uh, it's just choked choked with uh, with mud so uh, we've come up here for the uh, the Easter long weekend it's been a good uh, good day or two making the most of the uh, the bushwalking this morning I went to the top of Mount Tomaree with my granddaughter and carried her on my shoulders <laughs> for two hours straight which was uh, a lot of fun and uh, a beautiful, beautiful experience where we uh, saw the sunrise and uh, enjoyed some uh, quality time together. Anyway, what I want to do today is go through a, a book summary, a book summary entitled Presence by Amy Cuddy. And uh, as you can see, the, uh, the beach here is just littered, littered with wood, with timber, with, uh, with weeds. It must have been uh, pretty uh, horrendous during the, uh, the past couple of weeks when the rain was shooting down. And uh, not only is the inner harbour of Port Stephens brown and muddy, but also outside, outside the ocean, uh, where this estuary feeds out into the ocean, is also of a similar sort of colour. As I said, I was up on top of uh, Mount Tomaree this morning and it was just I was just amazed at the, the colour of the ocean. When I was looking down onto uh, Zenith Beach, it looked like it was, uh, I guess, the consistency and colour of Coca-Cola. Anyway, as you can see, we've got a sunset happening there in the background. Won't be long before the sun uh, just dips over the horizon. So let's uh, kick off and see what we can learn from this, uh, this book called Presence. So uh, the author, a female author, makes a couple of uh, key points. And one of the, uh, the key sort of uh, points to kick off the book is that she talks about focus, focus less on the impression that you are making on others and more on the impression than you're making of yourself. So uh, it's a powerful one. So focus on the impression you're making on yourself as opposed to the impression you're making on others. Um, and to also know that the author also notes here that we all experience uh, moments of self-doubt, which come in waves um, at different moments throughout our lives. And we need to uh, learn how to, how to stay and how to maintain our self-confidence. So in order to do this, some of the things that the author talks about is that we need to, um, I'll just kneel down here for a little while. We need to, um, to sit down and, and write down what our core values are. So uh, in order to find your top core values, what the author suggests is to uh, um, sit down and write about the things that you value, uh, write down all your values, the things that you value most in your life, and then looking at those values to identify the key one. And once you identify the key value, the author then talks about then writing an essay just spilling your guts and writing as much as you can about that single value so that you really, really understand what it is that you value most, why you value it most, and how you get to experience that value by doing different things in your life. So uh, that's a key point because the author says here is that by finding your top core value, uh, you basically learn how to handle stress better and become more courageous. So knowing, just, just knowing 
what your key values are or your key value. Once you know what your key value is, then you're, um, you're basically unbreakable, according to this author. So knowing what makes you tick, knowing what, makes you, what you stand for is important because once you know it, once you clearly and, uh, and, uh, and unambiguously know it, then you're in a better position to, uh, to be stronger and um, bolder with all of the things that you think about, talk about, and actually do. And the author then also talks about the importance of continually to remind ourselves of past wins. Let me get a bit of an a bit more of an angle on this selfie stick so we can see this sunset and enjoy it as best we can. There we go. So uh, the author then talks about uh, reminding ourselves of our prior wins and all the good times that we've had in our past. And then she talks about um, two key um, systems that work in our lives, two key systems. I must admit, I wasn't aware of these two systems and only became aware of it uh, through reading about them in this book. And the two systems that we need to manage and maintain in our life and ensure that we've got a, a proper balance, a uh, empowering balance, is a system called the approach system and a system called the inhibition, the inhibition system. So what are these systems? What's it all about? So just to clarify it and learn a little bit more about it, the approach system is the system that basically drives you or leads you to try and do new things and to be adventurous and bold. And it's good for people who are outgoing and social because they're always willing to experiment, they're always willing to do things and they feel comfortable just doing things and being part of uh, a, a bigger social um, a phenomenon so to speak the inhibition system on the other hand is the system which keeps us timid which keeps us cautious which tries to keep us safe from all harm but sometimes this system gets out of control and you see it you see it now on Facebook with all the conspiracy theorists with all the people worried about uh, COVID-19 vaccinations and 5G and, and all of the other conspiracy theories. You know, people who have overstimulated their inhibition system. So their inhibition system is out of control. So these people need to try and manage their own affairs and manage their inhibition system because what happens is that if you don't manage your inhibition system and you're constantly trying to be cautious, safe, timid and uh, out of harm's way all the time, then you're, bo you're basically, basically going to feel helpless and hopeless, according to the author. And when you, once you fall into it, once you fall into that, uh, that situation, then you're in, uh, in big trouble so to speak so when we feel helpless we need to activate where possible our approach system take control and take action anyway a few people there are talking about their lines and where the lines are in a boat coming in so a bit of a, <laughs> a blue happy between the fishermen and the boaters anyway let's continue so uh, we basically need, the call to action is we need to be less cautious and more bold, less inhibited and more um, out there, so to speak, um, and to, to live our lives, not to sit back wondering and sit back trying to get through life unscathed. Let's get to the end of our lives with scars, with lessons, with, uh, with wisdom, that we can pass on to others and to know that we have lived a full life. 
So the author then goes on to something else which is really, really powerful. So listen up, young people, listen up, everybody. And this is all about self-confidence, how to build self-confidence. And they say here that if you want to be more self-confident, then you simply need to improve your posture. Improve your posture and improve your breathing. Because shallow breathing and a weak posture don't give you strength. It basically drains you of strength. And it also allows other people to see you as, 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 as a soft cock, as a weakling. So what we need to do is we need to improve our posture, pull our shoulders back, lift our head up high, take in deep breaths and talk with strength, not with weakness. Because if you're speaking with weakness, you don't have strength. You drain yourself of strength. So um, you just need, according to this author, to move your body. So on that note, I'm going to get up and go for a bit of a walk. So you need to move your body, according to the author. So move your body so that you can participate, be a participant in life and to have a posture which will impact everything you do and will put you on notice. Put people on notice to say that this person here is, uh, is a person who we need to, um, I guess, pay attention to. They've done experiments, they've done, they've done studies on posture and in the schooling system, what they sort of found is that people with, with poor postures uh, tend to have lower grades. And this is pretty sad. It's sad on the one hand, but on the other hand, it's pretty, uh, pretty powerful. Because what you learn and what you know is that if you can change your posture, then you may be able to change your grades and uh, achieve better outcomes. Um, at school, at university, in your workplace. So something to think about and something to try and uh, incorporate in our lives. So the way you hold yourself, this is powerful. The way you hold yourself is critical to how others and yourself see yourself. So you need to do whatever you can to activate to activate your approach system. So let's move back and approach that sunset. So you need to activate your approach system wherever possible, and you need to do it on command. And to do it on command means that you need to manage your posture and you need to manage your breathing. I've got to tell you, when I was doing karate, because I did martial arts and I'm a second dan black belt in Gojiru and also a first dan black belt in, uh, in Kabuto which is weapons and I'm also a national or was a national referee so uh, I learned very very early in the piece there that breathing and posture stance gives you tremendous strength and unbelievable bravery so if you act confident, if you breathe confident, if you posture confident, then you will exude confidence is the bottom line. Because what it does is your breathing, your posture, your stance, the way you see yourself activates the part of the brain, part of your brain that helps you become courageous. And that is what we all need especially in this world where we've got the media spreading fear, uncertainty, doubt, causing uh, concern, causing us to doubt ourselves, to worry, to not trust ourselves, not to trust anybody around us. So what we need to do is I guess we need to take personal leadership to, uh, for our own benefit, to activate our own approach system and to limit our inhibition system. So I think I'll leave it there for today. So thank you very much for joining me on this wonderful autumn afternoon up here at Nelson Bay. I'm at Little Beach, and as you can see, there are people everywhere, but there's also 
trees, logs, uh, weeds everywhere as well because it's been a horrific couple of weeks leading into Easter with uh, huge amounts of rain and uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, uh, mud washed into the system as well as timber, trees, logs and weeds. But anyway, let's finish up now with a positive affirmation. I'm alive, I am well, and I feel absolutely great. To my friends and family, stay connected, stay reasonable, stay uh, relevant. And let's make sure that most importantly of all, we take some lessons from this book, this book today, and to make sure that we stay confident. We build our confidence through our posture and our breathing and become courageous and bold and don't submit to the, uh, the media, the bullshit, the fear mongers, the uh, um, conspiracy theorists and to live our lives as heroes, as, um, as leaders, as personal leaders in our own families, around work, work uh, groups, and to, uh, to not take a backward step for anything or for every, anyone, anyone. Anyway, take care, Daleme. I look forward to coming again to you from a different location with a different message. I'm going to uh, go through and uh, do a number of book summaries tonight so that I can crank through uh, three or four tomorrow so I can stay on track to uh, achieving my thousand, my thousand vlogs and be part of that thousand vlog club. So take care, yasas, filakya, from Jim's 5am club, and we'll chat again. Bye for now, cheers. <laughs>